Right friends, welcome back to third capsule of 33rd week. Recently, our Prime Minister raised the issue of Balochistan, Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. And we are going to throw some light on these regions and please look into this. This is the map of uh, Pakistan and if you look at the provinces and other regions of Pakistan, Pakistan has got uh, four provinces. Punjab is one province. Uh, Punjab's capital is Lahore. Then uh, Sindh province capital is Karachi. Khyber Pakhtunkhwa or uh, Northwest Frontier province, uh, its capital is uh, Peshawar. Balochistan capital is Quetta. And these four are the provinces in Pakistan. In addition to these four provinces, capital territory that is Islamabad area is ruled as capital territory and one more semi-autonomous region is there that is the federally administered tribal areas with headquarters at Peshawar. So total four provinces, one capital territory region of Islamabad, one federal administration to rule tribal areas in addition to these disputed territories with uh, autonomous powers, these uh, two disputed territories as claimed by Pakistan. They are Azad Jammu and Kashmir with Mujifarabad as the capital, Gilgit Baltistan as Gilgit as the capital. So these uh, two autonomous and disputed territories of Pakistan were acceded to India as per the instrument of uh, accession of Raja Hari Singh in 1947. and. Please look into this. These eight territories are shown in this map and out of these eight territories, two territories, Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan are part of Indian sovereignty as per the instrument of accession by Raja Hari Singh in 1947. So, this Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan are within the sovereign territory of India. Now the Prime Minister raised the issue of Balochistan, Azad Jammu and Kashmir, Gilgit Baltistan. And here I am not going to discuss Azad Jammu and Kashmir because Azad Jammu and Kashmir territory is the territory administered by Pakistan and they came up to line of control and up to the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir, that area is Azad Jammu and Kashmir. And I would like to deal with Balochistan as well as Gilgit Baltistan, right? Let us look at Balochistan. As I have already told you, it is one of the four provinces in Pakistan and it is inhabited by Baloch, Pashtuns, then Brahuis and several other ethnic people. And please look into this slide. These are Baloch, then Pashtuns and this region is home to several regional languages mostly underdeveloped and Gwadar port is situated in this region. Please look into this slide. This Gwadar port to Kashgar city, China-Pakistan economic corridor connects Gwadar port. Gwadar port is in Balochistan and ironically this CPEC passes through Azad Jammu and Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan. Right and if you want more about Balochistan, it is known for its dry desert climate, population is just 13 million and capital is Quetta and area wise it is the largest in Pakistan. Right? Let us go back to history. All of you are well aware during 1947 when we and Pakistan got independence, there were several princely states. Almost 565 princely states were amalgamated into Indian territory and as per the instrument of accession, Jammu and Kashmir was uh, amalgamated to Indian territory. Balochistan was another princely state and Muhammad Ali Jinnah on 4th August 1947 stated that Balochistan will continue to be independent. But subsequently, Pakistan sent uh, troops in 1948 and annexed the territory and subsequently Air Khan, the then ruler of Kalat later signed the treaty of accession with Pakistan and his brothers and followers 
continued the fight subsequently and in the subsequent years crisis erupted between baloch and the pakistan army several times during the past 70 years and about balochistan the present status after 2000 the fifth wave of insurgency broke out it has got several separatist groups and the strongest one is balochistan liberation army and pakistan alleges that balochistan liberation army is supported by india and mass scale disappearances human rights violations are quite common in these areas and this is the present status of balochistan technically speaking india has got nothing to do with balochistan but india has got everything to do with azad jammu and kashmir and gilgit baltistan let us look at gilgit baltistan it is highly mountainous area please look into these pictures population is around 18 lakhs and it was granted limited autonomy by the pakistani government area is around 72000 square kilometers and it has got famous locations for trekking and almost 50 peaks are more than 7000 meters height capital is gilgit and three of the world's longest glaciers outside the polar region are found in gilgit the baltistan right and let us go back to history it was ruled by several local leaders during medieval times but subsequently after the defeat of a six in first anglo sikh war first anglo sikh war took place in 1845 1846 after the defeat of six in first anglo sikh war it became part of princely state of jammu and kashmir in the year 1846 it became part of princely state of jammu and kashmir and it remained so till 1947 in 1947 maharaja of jammu and kashmir hari singh signed instrument of accession to india technically gilgit baltistan region has to come to india but what happened major william brown commander of gilgit scouts what is gilgit scouts gilgit scouts were created by the british army so as to protect the agency areas nearer to the border of the then british india so as to protect the agency areas nearer to the border of the then british india britishers created gilgit scouts and some of the areas especially agency areas were taken on lease from maharaja of jammu and kashmir and major william brown commander of the gilgit scouts mutinied that means revolted on 1st november 1947 and overthrown the governor and subsequently pakistan took over gilgit baltistan the matter was taken to united nations security council by the then prime minister of the country jawahar lal nehru and the united nations passed a resolution in april 1948 calling for pakistan to withdraw from all of jammu and kashmir and at the same time india to reduce its forces to bare minimum subsequently as per the united nations resolution a plebiscite has to be held to ascertain the wishes of the people but plebiscite was never held and in fact india changed its position subsequently right so this is all about gilgit baltistan and please look into this as things stand today i am talking about three regions quoted by the prime minister balochistan azad jammu and kashmir gilgit baltistan balochistan india has got nothing to do with it do human rights violations mass disappearances are there india has got no stand as far as balochistan is concerned it is their internal affair but if you look at azad jammu and kashmir this is a part of our sovereign territory of jammu and kashmir as it was annexed to india through the instrument of accession by raja hari singh similarly gilgit baltistan was also part of then princely state of jammu and kashmir hence both azad jammu and kashmir and gilgit baltistan were part of the then princely state of jammu and kashmir hence technically the sovereignty lies with india though they are administered by pakistan as on date so balochistan india has got nothing to do with balochistan but azad jammu and kashmir and gilgit baltistan are sovereign territory of india 
and is it appropriate to raise the issue of balochistan by india indian prime minister raised the issue of balochistan and there is a serious debate going on whether is it appropriate or not the one view is it highlights to the world at large pakistan's nefarious designs and its actions of aiding and abetting terrorists and resorting to mass disappearances and human rights violations and it has to be made known to the world and it is a tit for tat strategy by india and this is one view the counter view is pakistan for the past several years making an allegation that india is supporting terrorists in balochistan and when indian prime minister raised the issue of balochistan it gives credence to the pakistan's allegation that india is supporting terrorists in balochistan second apprehension is world may view india on equal footing with pakistan so far most of the countries of the world are not believing pakistan and now by making the counter allegation by the indian prime minister now india and pakistan may be viewed on same platform as far as terrorism and cross border disputes are concerned so this is the counter view expressed by experts right whatever it is as things stands today azad jammu and kashmir and gilgit baltistan are supposed to be sovereign part of indian territory and india has got nothing to do with the balochistan right friends with this let us conclude this capsule please do join for other capsules have a nice day thank you